Well, I'm here with Dina Wakeley, who is going to share some amazing paint and ink techniques because she's a girl who uses paint and ink and scrapbooking supplies to mix it all together. And if we look at her finished piece for just one second, I want to show you how much that title pops off the page. And I know we think about altering our letters, but actually you can use your letters plain if you alter the rest. So Dina, tell me about this fabulous page. Well, I use my favorite ink and gesso, and then I like my title to pop. So I love to pick my title in a contrasting color. So that's what I did to make it pop off the page. Cool, let's get started. We're gonna start by making an embellishment for our page. I'm gonna just put a little paint on this tag. That is the biggest tag I've <laughs> ever know. seen in my entire you life. You should have a stash of these by your workstation because you can put extra paint, extra ink on them, and then you just muck them up and then they, you cut them up later and they're the perfect thing for your, your layouts and your mixed media projects. So a little bit of acrylic paint. Don't worry about going all the way to the edge. I never do. I'm gonna put a little bit of white spray. Will you hand me the okay. word stencil for me? Yes, I'll be happy to. I love the way there text you. looks. Me too. So I'm just gonna use this, this so white. So even while the paint is wet, you can go ahead and oh, use indeed. your spray ink. And I notice that you're moving your hand as you spray. Always. Why is that? Well, if you hold it in one spot, you're gonna get seepage under your stencil. And that is a danger when you're using ink in a spray bottle. And I don't wanna get seepage. I want okay. it to be a good image. Look so that's that gonna dry. Look white really pops so cool. It really does, and that will dry nice and matte and opaque okay, on, on so the acrylic. Okay, so it's fine to mix paint and ink is what you're saying. Absolutely. So here's one that's done. I'm going to have you stamp it. You're going to take that tone on tone. Okay. So, uh, so I'm using a blue ink pad yep, and I'm applying blue. this to the, my big stamp here. And that is going to get it, give us a little bit of more a little bit more background texture, basket okay. weave in a way. How would you like me to stamp this? I'm afraid to mess it up. The answer is yes. Okay. I believe you know that, <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> so then I can just stamp wherever and wherever. put some pressure on there. Um, you can even stamp again to get oh, a lighter. Oh, I don't even need to re-ink. Yeah, I, you just want a little bit of texture going on there. Okay, I mean, let's keep going. Keep let's going. See how far we can You can go probably do the whole tag. Is this any kind of particular ink in order to be able to stamp on top of acrylic paint? It is. I like to have a permanent ink, um, and this one in particular, particular has an oil base so it will dry on the paint really nice. That's awesome. So it's wonderful. And then when the tag is dry, you're going to cut it into little strips like this. Oh my gosh. That actually is so surprising to me. I thought this was paper when I saw these little scraps sitting there. I didn't realize you actually cut up. That's a brave woman. I'm a, I always feel like a tag is something. Oh no. You should have it as it is. No, and especially if the tag turns out bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which this one didn't, but if the, you know, you cut it up and look, everything got looks better strips when of it's smaller. And that it, goes back yeah. to the tip you gave earlier about having a bunch of tags around to clean up your excess mess because just like this, you could have tags under your workspace and then it would allow you yeah. to then use them. Yes, and you, you should absolutely keep a stash by your workspace. Don't waste your paint and ink ever. <laughs> Always blot it off. Now I'm gonna put And now a, you're using a tag as a palette. I am using a tag as a palette. And then you could cut it up later. Exactly. See, there's a method to my madness. It's true. I'm gonna use this blending tool. Okay, and so this, it's like a foam dauber, essentially. Yeah. It, it's like a makeup sponge, but more control with that little okay. handle. And I'm going to use gesso mm -hmm. to stencil some You're of these birds. You're just up and down mm -hmm. through there. Now, gesso, let's talk about gesso. What, what is gesso I love here? gesso. I could take a bath in gesso. So gesso <laughs> is a primer for your acrylic. And I like to put gesso underneath so my acrylic layers. So it's not actually, it's different from white acrylic paint. It is. White acrylic paint is more opaque and, and it has a pigment load. Okay. okay. Whereas this will not have as much pigment because this is meant to be your foundation. So when a technique says that you should do it with gesso, you actually need the gesso as opposed to white Correct. acrylic. Correct. Okay. So I'm putting this gesso down because what will happen is when I spray over this, the gesso is going to um, soak up the ink differently than the plain paper will. Okay. And I'll get a resist. So you're Whoa. going to put your stencil texture on there. You let that dry, Let obviously. that dry. Move your stencil around a little bit so you've got a variety going on. That's cool. I like how the birds are in different sizes. Is yeah. and it really moves around. And the, the little blending tool really does help you get And of course this one is already detail. dry and this now you're using dry. a spray ink. And is there any method or madness or whatever we're talking about here in terms of the colors that you're using? Yes, you wanna choose colors that don't make brown when they mix because inks are translucent. How do you know? You must memorize the color wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so no pressure there. You must. You need to memorize. So I'm going to let it drip. I love drips. So you have to add. Oop, you have to add a lot of water. 
Okay, so and you added orange spray ink, mm -hmm. pink spray ink, then a lot of water, Correct. and you're sort of tipping it up to let those drips happen and sort of splashing it around. We're making a big mess because yep. that's the way we like to craft. In fact, we have we have dirty hands from crafting all day. Well, you have dirty hands. I'm just Always. really been watching you do it. It's, it's how, amazing. It's how I operate. Will you please hand me that heart stencil? I would be happy to. And to continue my little tone on tone, my little so uh, again, spray. it's all wet, and you're all going wet. in again with more wet. And look at the way that the wet just runs through there. So that the Isn't hearts that don't cool? become harsh, no. they soften out. That's I love lovely. That. I am in love with that. <laughs> that is so awesome. So through the magic of pre-done pieces, I have one that's already dry. So okay. here's how it looks when it's dry. Well, okay. it looks really different. It looks really different to me than it did obviously when it's wet. The colors are different. They sort of soak in and all that kind of stuff. Now this is very bright. So how do you tone it down to put on a scrapbook page? Here are my, a few of my tips. I now choose a neutral style of pattern paper. So in the sample that's already made, mm -hmm. I have a chevron. Oh yeah. Not bad, right? Nice. A little bit more texture, yeah. right? They're both fine. They're both good choices. And of course, if you put it like on a black background, it would be really bright. It would really pop. But to add a little black, I'm going to put the frame mm. behind it. So this is a frame here. This is a great composition device. Mm -hmm. It will focus in all of your elements, especially if you use something you use something strong like ink. Oh, what a great idea. So there's my frame. And then my little strips of handmade pattern paper are gonna go Cut along the, the bottom. And tags are such a great service to work on because they really take a beating, you know, lots and lots. And, and I see you have lots cheap. more strips down there too. They're, they're inexpensive. The tags are inexpensive too. So if you screw one up again, you don't feel like, oh, mm -hmm. I've wasted a dollar sheet of pattern paper. Now if we look back at the finished one that you have here, I can see you've added all sorts of cute metal embellishments like the little paper clips. We have a little bit for the vintage feel of the tag behind there. And of course you're fabulous. Boys, I noticed that you're using black and white photography, which is always good when you're using lots of color. Correct. I always say when you have strong color, your photographs have to stand up to it. So strong photos are the key as well. So many good ideas. Thank, Thank you, you so much. My pleasure.